All right, I think I have this figured out. <laughs> so sorry, you guys. Um, so I'm back and um, I can see your comments here. Now I'm doing this just a little bit differently today. Um, so please continue to help me um, <laughs> navigate all of these new things. So I can see your comments. Um, so go ahead and comment and I am just waiting for, okay, I think I have this figured. Okay, let's do that. Um, can everybody hear me? I think we've got, okay, Mohammed is here, wonderful. Um, okay, so I am waiting for my friend and student to join us here. Hi, Faisan. Um, and then we will jump right in. So if you missed the comment um, earlier, so let's see, hang on just here. Let me make sure my friend is able to get in. Um, okay. Um, if you missed what we were talking about just a couple of minutes ago, um, we are talking today with one of my students who I believe has had really great success with achieving a, a very high level of fluency in English. And what I wanted to share with you guys today is how he has done that. Um, he has some really great tips. He has some wonderful strategies. And um, I think that what he has to share with you guys could be very helpful. Um, so um, as soon as he is on here, we'll go ahead and get started. And then, um, and you'll get to hear. So he is joining us, I believe, right now. I'm going to admit him here. So there's a little delay with, um, hey, there he is. Great. Um, let's see. I have to mute this thingy. But can you hear me, Ahmed? is on here we'll go ahead and get started okay and then um let's I, see i need to mute that and then okay i think we still have things to figure out here <laughs> um <laughs> hang on just a second here let's do this um oh gosh this is just <laughs> Hang on just a second. Okay. Oh, I know that. That's what I need to do. Okay, perfect. We got that. Okay. Ahmed, you can hear me? You're muted. Yes. I can hear you. <sighs> okay. I'm so sorry. We had all of this. This is my first time doing this kind of an interview. So, uh, okay. So, we've got it figured out. How are you today? Fine. Fine. I'm doing Good. great. Good. I'm so <laughs> glad you agreed to do this. Okay, so I'm going to start again. I don't know if you heard me introduce you before, but um, Mohammed and I have been, uh, for the past couple of months, working together. Basically, we get together on Fridays and we chat. Um, he is a very motivated um, English student, meaning he has kind of developed some strategies that I think are just phenomenal. And um, as we were in a conversation last week, um, he shared with me some of his things that he kind of does every day to push himself outside of his comfort zone. Um, and so if we could kind of just back up a little, I would love to hear you. I've just got a couple of questions that I think would really help a lot of people. Um, so do you want to just share with us um, your like background with English? Like, you know, when did you start learning kind of those, you know, your background with English and then kind of your general motivation for, for why you want to speak English? Yeah, uh, actually I start 
learning English uh, maybe more than I believe ten years ago or something like it's more than that. I don't I don't remember the exact year since I start like intensively focus on improving my English, but I believe it's like maybe 12, 15 years ago. And uh, for me, the uh, motivation is actually because I understand the importance of, uh, of how English is going to give me opportunities and it will, uh, a lot of barrier will uh, work on and I will be able to have uh, multiple things that I can do if I learn this uh, language, like communicating with different people from different nations. Yeah. And, and recently in the last five years, what um, motivated me more to work, working on my English is that, that I actually want to move to one of the Western uh, countries like America, Australia, or Canada, for example. So this is also added to the purpose and motivations that why I want to learn this language. And actually, the more I get benef uh, benefit from this language, like the more I able to connect with different people and communicate and exchange with different people from different culture, I get more motivated and get more uh, excited. Uh, and, and with the time, my love to, to, to the language is increased and increased because it is like right now it is the, the international language that we have to use to communicate with other this is like right. the global language that uh, it will help us to communicate with different people with the english is their native language or not right it, it doesn't matter but this is the language that you can use it to communicate with different people where they are from China or America or from any country in the world. And yeah, yeah this, is, and this is the motivations for, for me. I love that. I mean, that was one of the things I think in our conversation that really struck me because you actually helped me to uh, kind of put words to my feelings about teaching English. You know, I mean, you know, as far as being a teacher, and I love working with people from all over the world, but you said this idea of like this global language and that really just kind of, um, it just kind of hit my heart, if, if you know what I mean. It was like, wow, that is exactly how I feel. Like it's this, a bit of, you know, like English is like, because so many people use it, you know, in tourism or, or in commerce or banking and finance around the world, it really kind of is the closest thing that we have to a, a global language. Um, and unless you and I decide to um, create our own language, which we could do, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, I think that really, um, I don't know, I just keep saying that because it really, it really hit my heart when you said that about this global language. Um, you know, I've, I've talked to you specifically about working with people who had immigrated to the United States, and I could see how difficult their lives were if they had had zero English. And so, and I, I wanted nothing more for those people than to like be able to assimilate, you know, and that didn't mean like give up their native language or give up their culture, but more like have all of the luxury and all of the access and opportunity that that everybody else had because because of English. So so that I, I just really I totally agree with you on that. Um, so okay, so the next thing I wanted to ask you about um, is some maybe some of the habits that you have. Um, I was really so so for those of you watching or listening, um, Ahmed is just a really great learner in general. Um, and so that is honestly, it's a key really to, um, to being um, in anything, you know, if you wanted to become better at running or whatever, right? There's this process of learning. And um, there, so, so some of the things that you described to me last week were some habits that you had. Um, and I'll just let you, you know, so if you could maybe just describe, you know, some of the things that you do, people always ask me, Ahmed, how can I be a fluent speaker or how can I, 
think in English. Um, and those questions are really difficult sometimes. Um, so that's kind of what I would like to help, you know, people see now is what are you doing, you know, to, to be, be as fluent as you are? Yeah, I believe the first step is uh, to know your, to know your motivation as, as the first place. You should know why you want to learn this language and you should have like a strong reason and why, why you want to learn this language. Because if, if your reason is weak or you just like kind of want to learn it, of course you will not uh, invest a lot in, in learning this language. So I believe the first thing is uh, know your motivation. And, and for me, the, the motivation is very strong. So this is the first step. Um, and after you uh, clear out uh, your real motivation, and if it linked to your goal in life uh, in general, or your vision in life in general, it will be more stronger. So uh, know your motivation. This is the first thing, and know why you want to learn this language. Mm -hmm. And afterward, what I what I think is important is to surround yourself with with the language. Of course, it's like for me, I'm in I'm do what I'm calling like fasting from my native language, which is Arabic. I love I that. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm, it's kind of like I'm fasting from, uh, it seems like fasting from food, but I'm fasting from using the language, which is easier for me to express myself, to handle my daily life activity and do my stuff. So I'm trying as much as possible that do whatever possible for me to do it in uh, English. Even though I never went to like Western country, like nowadays I'm live, uh, I live in uh, the Saudi Arabia and most of my life I was in Arabic countries. Uh, so I never went to like uh, a Western country or, or uh, a Western college or even uh, through my early uh, year in education I, I didn't went to like international uh, school. We, we have some of this school in our Arabic country, like international school where the students get more improved in their English because mo mo all of the subjects there is just teach uh, or taught in this language. Sure. So I, I, I never been through all of these things, but what I did in the last five years or in the last couple of years that I tried to surround myself with as much as possible English as much as possible. I, I, I tried to do anything that I can do. I, I decided that I want to, at least for five years ahead, I want to just like totally fasting from Arabic. I just only using Arabic with my, when I talk or communicate with my relative or only in emergency situation. Besides that, I just uh, read in, uh, in uh, English all the books that uh, they have, they have been read since three years ago or more than, than that. I only read it in English and I'm planning to do this also for the next five years. Also all the TV show, movie, articles in the internet, all the things that I do uh, in the internet or in the TV, I just do it in English. Like I, it's like, I believe more than five years that I never watched like uh, Arabic, TV movie or TV series or TV show or Arabic movie or Arabic show at all. I just watch it in English. Even uh, I don't listen to any like Arabic song or I just listen to English song. And wow. <laughs> at the beginning, yeah, at the beginning, it's, qu it's quite challenging actually. And I, I believe maybe for some, it could be like the identity, like, I'm yeah. Arabic. Why have to just why have to put myself in this uh, situation or position? Because I, I'm Arabic, I have to use my language. So there is quite a bit challenge regarding identity. Like, why do I have to like? It's kind of like I'm replacing my identity with yeah another identity. But in my case, I believe it's not true because I don't like I don't learn English. For example, to become like 
replace my Arabic identity with yes. American or Australian or no, I, I learned it because this is international language, this is global language. It's not right. like not like bound or tied to one individual country. Yeah, I, I know I, I know that I totally agree that language carries an uh, identity or the heritage or the tradition of the nation. Mm -hmm. But for English, for English, uh, at least in my perspective, it's it is a different case. English yeah. is like right now it is a glo the global language. It is yeah. the global language, and I'm proud that I'm Arabic. In the same time, I try to master this language, and I don't find any issue with putting myself in this position and try as much as possible fast from my native language, at least for five, I believe five years, maybe it's, or maybe more than that, six or seven or 10 years if you want. Yeah. <laughs> I believe it's, it's more than enough to put yourself in the position that you just think and talk and like a, uh, like English speaker or like native speaker. Right. And I believe it worked well, well with me and I'm still, I'm still working with myself. Still, I'm not like that perfect with the language. <laughs> right. Well, that is one of the things for me that I think is so um, incredible about your commitment to it is that you do have a very high level of English already, yet you are still kind of that lifelong learner who really wants to always improve. And so it's actually somewhat challenging for me to, when we're, you know, you're asking for feedback, it's like, well, there's such small things, you know, that are showing up because you've just done such a good job of identifying and then isolating the things that come up in terms of your, your accent or, or whatever. So, and I just wanted to reiterate what you were saying too, because <clears throat> I think you said this uh, in our conversation last week, but you said that um, you really wanted to put yourself in the mindset, in the Western mindset. And I think that that is, is super important. And I think it is what um, kind of challenges people or they think, you know, when they get stuck with English. So if you're, you know, somebody who lives in Brazil or, you know, in, in Saudi Arabia, you know, and then you think, oh man, well, how can I ever, how can I ever overcome where I am to, to, to get where I want to be kind of a thing, you know? And um, I think that what you've done in terms of putting yourself into the Western mindset, can you, can you say a little bit more about how you've done that? I know you mentioned in our conversation last week, um, certain TV shows that you watched um, that that kind of helped you be helped you become more exposed to Western culture, and then obviously then also because there's you know culture and language are so tied, you know um, can you can you um, talk a little bit about the Western mindset and how you did that? Yeah. Actually, uh, for me, as I mentioned, yes, I I watch a lot of like um, a Netflix series, for example. I watch yeah. Friends, <laughs> the Big Bang Theory, <laughs> uh, Brooklyn Nine Nine, I believe the name. And more than that, and each of these series, like they have like twelve season or ten season. Right. Also, I I'm listening. I listen a lot to uh, podcasts and audiobooks, and also I have like a subscription in a platform called Script. I believe it's popular. Uh, there is like a, a novel story, which is in audiobook format. Uh, I I do remember that I, I listened to one of them. It was like the Shadow Hunter. It's, uh, there is movie based on that uh, uh, on that uh, uh, novel or story, and it was like I believe more than ten book, and each one is like ten hour. Oh wow! I, I was yeah, I was enjoy, enjoying it. By the way, it's, it's it's not like I'm just it's studying. I just um, I just do it not to, to learn English, just to for for the sake of 
listen to that story because I want to listen to it. Yeah. I just, I just, I, I imagine that I'm like a, a person who's only using this language, which is English. So what I, how, how, how I'm gonna live my life. So of course I have needs. I have things that I want to do. I, if I want to have a leisure time or uh, enjoyable time, I want to watch movie. So right. When, I, when I'm doing, I'm not doing in like I want to just learn. Like I want, I, I, I don't want to make it like a work or obligation or thing that. No, I just watch movie for for the sake of watching movie, reading book for the sake of uh, uh, reading that book, listen to a new uh, to to. To the news just for the sake to know the news right and with the time it become like sometime i just listen to the podcast or reading or listening to that audio book and even i don't pay any attention to that i'm listening to a foreign language it's just become like natural that's like, right even sometimes yeah even sometimes I forget that he speak it with a foreign language it just become like I just received a confirmation that that is it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and then I think what's also really helpful about that is that there are, you know, especially with watching shows. Um, and I do remember that you said you did not use subtitles. And I wanted to point okay. that out because many people think, I mean, I think many people think that subtitles will help them understand it. But I, I like what you suggested without subtitles because there are other things, cues, you know, that you can use in, so let's talk about like any sort of movie or series, friends, or, um, you know, any of those things that people might watch. There are other cues that relay um, meaning, right? So there's, you know, you can throw your hands up, there's like gestures, and all of that is kind of intertwined with language and communication. And so, if you're busy watching a movie, but you're reading the subtitles, you may miss those things versus, you know, just allowing it in and kind of, and kind of being comfortable with a little bit, uh, you know, not understanding a little part of it. So maybe if you're, you know, if you're reading the subtitles, you might understand 90%. But, you know, maybe you take the subtitles away and now you only understand 70%. That might feel frustrating. But in fact, I believe after our conversation, I believe you're going to gain a lot more by, by fully kind of fully immersing into, you know, the show or picking up on those things, you know, that, that you might not see if you're reading the whole time. So I really, I really liked that suggestion. Um, and, and it's kind of surprising, but I, I, you know, when you think about it, it makes a lot of sense. So did you ever feel kind of frustrated or uncomfortable maybe when watching shows without <laughs> subtitles? <laughs> I'm going to guess that you say yes, but. <laughs> yeah, at the beginning, yes. At the beginning, yeah. But with the time and with, with the years, you find that it's become like a natural thing. And, yeah. And. Um, because in the real life, in the real life, they will no one will talk with you and they'll be a subtitle pop out. Totally, <laughs> totally. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and like you said, I think if if you know if somebody sets a, a goal or begins a new habit, right? It's always not comfortable in the beginning, right? And I think that that feeling uncomfortable is okay, and feeling uncomfortable is part of the process of of learning anything especially language because it's so linked to our character and our personality so there is a little bit of like having to let your 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 tie to your language and your culture you're never going to leave that completely but there is a, a almost like a setting it aside for a second to allow the space for this other thing to come in with english and you know uh you know, and it doesn't mean like you have to, you know, I, I just want to reiterate that because I think that at the core of many people's frustration with learning language is there's a bit of resistance. Um, 
you know, to bringing something new culturally into their life because it feels like they have to give up something. And so, you know, allowing space for the English to be in your life, it sounds kind of like, you know, kind of crazy, but I think that they're at the root of people's frustration with English is that there's a resistance to it culturally. Um, have you experienced that? And, you know, have you been able to kind of push through that? I mean, I know you have, but how have you done that? <laughs> yeah, actually it's true because people are identified by the culture and the language is a big part of this culture. Right. So sometimes people are like, uh, I'm, I'm proud with my culture. I don't want yeah. to just, I just want to learn that bit of level that I just communicate with other. But it depends, eventually uh, it depends on the person yeah. and his goal. But for me, as I mentioned before, I look to English like it's international language or it is like the global language. It's not like, I never tie it with a culture. Okay. I know it, it, it came from, from England or from British or, uh, and uh, this is their, uh, uh, it's its origin, but eventually it becomes a, um, the global or the global a uh, global language yeah. where a lot of people from different country uh, is uh, using it to speak. So I never look to English like it is like. I never tie it with the culture. I know. I know uh, it is root and it is culture uh, and its background. And but nowadays I never look to it uh, uh, this way. And. I, what I feel like nowadays we are in, like with the technology and with the internet and all of things become interconnected together. We are in certain place where we should drop the barrier between uh, the different culture and nations. So we are in a time or in place that we should communicate with with other because yeah. with this technology, uh, technology and the technological advancement right now we've come in a small village that all of us we are in different places and we communicate like, like we are in the same place so right now i see that this uh, this thing or me just become like i am just from this culture i don't want to know this other all of these things start to change again i believe we are in we are in change that everything become more united and more global yeah. and more like uh, we look to our the common things uh, uh, instead of look to our differences. And for that reason, we have to use a global language. And right now, it is English. So this is why I never uh, identified uh, the English with like a certain culture or I just look to it like a global language that I can yeah. use it to speak with all the people in different uh, places and country and nations. So, yeah. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Um, you know, and that's the thing, you know, many people might feel that, you know, um, resistance and maybe not even be able to identify it. So, you know, I've always thought of that, you know, being a, a kind of a piece in the process of, of you know, becoming more fluent. So, um, and then, like you said, being more comfortable with it and, and understanding that, you know, as a planet, we, we do want to come together. You know, the goal is people together. I mean, we're all humans. And so trying to find, you know, and mostly we're all the same, you know, we have little differences here and there, but they're so small. And so, um, I really love that. And, uh, you know, it really, your words just really remind me of, of, um, why I even became a teacher. So, so thank you for that. I really appreciate that. Um, I, yeah, if, um, that, that's all the questions I had for you today. I really, um, you know, appreciate you coming on and, and allowing me to ask you some questions. I just, as I said, our conversation was so inspiring to me last week. So it, it was great to be able to get you to come back on and um, talk. Um, 
And so hopefully people will, you know, interact on this live. I think, um, you know, we've got from the first thing, we have quite a few comments here, um, but I think there's a bit of a delay in things. So it's not coming through cl super clear, but, you know, if anybody has questions for Ahmed, uh, you know, go ahead and put them in the chat. Um, and, you know, he's very open and um, obviously you guys have been listening. So, um, you know, if there are other specific questions, um, I hope that you guys will feel comfortable um, reaching out. Let's see. Um, um, I'm, I'm just looking at some of these right now. Um, looks like people are mostly just saying hi. So I will, let's sign off for today, Ahmed, unless you wanted to share anything else about your English yeah, learning yeah. journey. I have uh, something that, uh, uh, a little thing that I want to add. Yeah. Uh, uh, first, first of all, for example, uh, if I talk about movie like uh, in Netflix, for example, because Netflix is very popular and a lot of people know how to subscribe to it and watch its uh, TV series and TV show. So there is like, uh, I believe uh, a new feature that has been added to, which is, has, which is called like uh, the descriptive uh, English. You can select uh, when you, there is like a settings when you uh, select your movie and there is like option whether you want to select the language English or descriptive English. Descriptive okay. English actually, there is, like, there is like the dialogue, the conversation and everything as a normal movie, but there is like a, a, a comments or someone describing like he enters the room, he, so, you get oh the, uh, yes, yes. Yeah. So interesting. So, is it for like dis dis like a disability? Maybe if somebody is. I, I believe that yeah. For okay. the, but, but for me, I use it as well because I get more extra. <laughs> oh extra yeah. Extra vocabulary. Yeah. Oh, that's that's a great. I put it here in the comments. So that's a great idea or a great suggestion. Um. Yeah, so do you do that for the whole thing or you just do it for a period of time or you kind of check in on things? I, I do it for the whole thing. There is like a commentator that comments about everything. Like if the character, the character enters the room, he say, he enters the room, he opens the door. He, okay. he he's grimming, he's like uh, frowning. So you get the language uh, of the normal conversation between the different characters and, uh, and you get extra extra language from this uh, comments or wow or this is description of so I, I i found it quite useful for me and it adds extra vocabulary and so i use it when i watch any movie i use it uh, this feature i don't That's only great. select like uh, the, yes yeah that's awesome. No, that's a really great suggestion. Thanks for sharing that. Um, I am hoping, I'm, I assume most people have, you know, especially now that we're in a global pandemic, <laughs> that most people have Netflix or some sort of streaming feature. Um, but that's a great, I love that. Um, awesome. Okay. Well, I let's see if people have questions here. I mostly people are just kind of asking. Um, Perfect. Okay. Well, let's see, Ahmed, if you um, will just sign off for today and thank you so, so much. This has been really exciting. Um, hopefully everybody can see this on the Facebook page. Um, you guys, um, I will be back um, doing lives starting next week as well. So um, Ahmed, thank you. <laughs> okay. We'll see you. I'll see you soon. I'll, I'll message you here in a minute. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. Okay. All right. Take yeah. care. Bye, everybody. You too.